So on a logarithm like this, actually expanding it is a lot easier, I swear, than what this might look like. Because I think a lot of times when students see the natural logarithm, they hate natural logarithms. They see a rational expression inside as the argument. They're like, they hate rational expressions. And then the square root and the quadratic underneath the radicand are in the radicand. It's like, there's way too much going on. But what I want you to do is just kind of focus on one thing at a time. And when we're doing expanding, that's exactly what we want to do. So there's a couple rules of logarithms that we're going to need to follow. And again, it doesn't matter if it's a natural logarithm or logarithm base 10 or any base, you still follow the exact same rules. Now, the first rule we're going to want to follow here is going to be the quotient property. And basically what the quotient property for logarithm says, if you have a, a logarithm of a um, quotient, then what you can do is you can expand that out into the difference of the two logarithms, where it's going to be the logarithm of the numerator minus the logarithm of the denominator. So what I see here is exactly that. I have a quotient here. So what I'm gonna do is apply the quotient property first to go ahead and get rid of the fraction. All right, so now what we need to do is go ahead and take a look at the radicals. Now, if you want a little tip when you're dealing with logarithms, is don't deal with radicals. What we can always do is remember, we can always replace a radical as a rational power. Okay, so if I have, remember this is going to be the index, right? And this is going to be the power of your uh, variable. So what we can do is we can always go ahead and rewrite this as x over b over a. So that's very, very important. Now, in this case, what I want you to be able to see is Remember, when we don't have an index written in this case, what we can do is we can go ahead and assume or know um, that that's going to be actually an index of two. So that's going to be your standard index. So unless we have like the cube root or the fourth root, um, it's going to be understood that that is the square root. And then over here, a lot of times we don't write the parentheses and this power, but since there's no parentheses or power in there, we can now assume that this whole quantity is being raised to the first power because again, that's not changing that power. So now what I can do here is I can rewrite this as a rational power. That's going to make my life a lot easier. Okay, so again, using this rational power rule, now what I did is I went ahead and rewrote our radical as a rational power. Now, the last step that I can do for expansion is going to be use what I call the power rule. Or not what I call it, it's not my rule, it's the rule of the power rule. Okay, and again, the variables, guys, it doesn't really matter. Um, whenever you have an argument raised to a power, you can go ahead and rewrite that in front as a product times your logarithm of that argument. So now what you can see here is I can take this one half and I can now go ahead and rewrite it um, as a product times the ln of x squared plus one. Okay, now quick little tip. One thing that gets students really confused a lot of times is they know, they recognize here that I can go expand from the quotient to over to subtraction, right? But when we're looking into expanding, I can't do anything else with this, okay? So I can't expand this to ln of x squared plus the ln of one. That is not a rule, don't follow it. Stick to your logarithm rules. And in this case, we did the quotient property as well as the power property. But if you're looking for more examples or more rules, then go and check out the next video I have for you here.